Welcome to our channel where we explore the mysteries and wonders of ancient civilizations. In this video, we are going to delve into the unusual and bizarre things that the ancient Egyptians did. We all know about pyramids, mummies, hieroglyphics, and the Nile River. But did you know that ancient Egyptians used baboons to catch criminals or bathed in sour milk to improve their skin? Let's take a closer look at these seven unique practices of ancient Egypt. There are many things that come to mind when thinking about ancient Egypt, such as pyramids, mummies, hieroglyphics, the Nile River, and ornate cat statues, to name a few. However, there is so much more to this unique and fantastical time in history. Here are some of the most unusual things that ancient Egyptians did. Trained baboons to catch criminals. While many people know that ancient Egyptians cherished cats, they also made particular use of baboons. Baboons were used as police animals, and Egyptian authorities would walk around with them on leashes and release them on criminals. Hieroglyphics and artwork show baboons apprehending thieves or other criminals by biting or holding them by the leg. In addition to helping the police, these animals were also trained to participate in picking fruit, making beer and dancing. Sacrificed and Mummified Crocodiles while archaeologists were discovering the mummified remains of humans, they also found the bodies of crocodiles that were preserved, but not always in the same way as humans. For instance, in 2019, while excavating the undisturbed tomb at Kabat al hawa a necropolis on the western bank of the Nile River, ten reptiles were found to be mummified without resin and evisceration of the remains, which are two main components of the mummifying process. It is believed that ancient humans preserved the animals as sacred offerings, kind of like food for the afterlife or for the reincarnations of specific deities. Used ox hoofs ashes, burnt eggshells, and a pumice for oral hygiene. The ancient Egyptians used a pumice to beat ox hooves ashes and burnt eggshells into a powder, which was then applied to the teeth and gums to protect their mouths from hygiene issues. They also used a combination of pepper, iris flowers, and rock salts. Interestingly enough, it's also thought that they were some of the first people to invent toothbrushes, or chew sticks, as they were called back then. Shaved off their eyebrows when their cats died. Ancient Egyptians loved their feline friends and believed that cats brought good luck to the people who owned them. They treated them like royalty, and when a beloved cat died, all of the members of the family would shave their eyebrows off to mourn its death. Used moldy bread to heal wounds. Ancient Egyptians were intelligent and resourceful, and used moldy bread to treat wounds. This method was actually effective, and was a precursor to the penicillin and other antibiotics used today. The mold on the bread was usually a fungus that would produce certain chemicals to kill or inhibit the growth of bacteria around a cut, scrape, or any other exposed wound. One female pharaoh wore a fake beard. Hatshepsut was an Egyptian pharaoh in the 18th dynasty and the only problem was that she was a woman. Female pharaohs were not always as respected as their male counterparts, although ancient Egypt was known for accepting gender equality for the most part. Hatshepsut wore a fake beard to appear more male and to gain more respect from her subjects. Bags filled with mouse bones were tied around the necks of infants and young children. It is believed that there was a strong belief in the healing power of rodents' bones. For instance, to cure an ill baby, the mother would eat a mouse, and then the bones of the mouse would be put in a little canvas bag tied with seven knots and hung around the baby's neck as a talisman. It has also been speculated that members of the lower class would use a similar method to treat bedwetting in children. Canopic jars were used to store and preserve a deceased person's internal organs during mummification, and then buried with him or her. Each jar held a different organ, one for the lungs, one for the liver, one for the intestines, and one for the stomach. The heart was thought to be the home of a person's soul and remained in the body. These jars were originally plain and unadorned, but as time went on, they became more ornate and represented the four deities known as the sons of Horus. Happy had the head of a baboon and stored the lungs. Duamatef had the head of a jackal and held the stomach. Imseti had a human head and stored the liver. And Kepesanov had the head of a falcon and held the intestines. King Pepihari is rumored to have ruled ancient Egypt for 90 years, holding the record for ruling for the longest period of time. He ascended to the throne when he was just six and lived to be in his mid to late 90s. 
He ruled Egypt during the 6th dynasty. However, a variety of modern Egyptologists contest this fact and instead believe that Pepiyoid actually ruled closer to 64 years. If that's the case, Pepiyoid would be the second longest reigning pharaoh behind Rameses the Great, who ruled for over 66 years during the 19th dynasty. Although not necessarily unusual, the ancient Egyptians' tattoo culture is often overlooked. Not only were tattooed mummies dating back to the 11th dynasty found by archaeologists, but living women were depicted in Egyptian art to have tattoos in the form of dots and swirls on the lower chest, abdomen, and thighs. Due to those placements, many historians believe that the markings had something to do with asking the gods for protection and blessing during pregnancy. It was believed that only women of high status would get tattooed. As time went on, the tattoos became more detailed and often resembled a deity to pay tribute to and gain favor with that particular god or goddess. The tattooing process itself was also full of significance. It was seen as ritualistic and began with the creation of a flat tattooing brush made of an odd number of needles braided together in a bundle, typically made of three, seven, or nine needles. The Egyptians placed importance on each of those numbers. After the tattooing brush was constructed, it would be dipped in charcoal soot or indigo powder and then used to puncture the skin multiple times. Both soot and indigo contain antiseptic qualities, which help to prevent infection. Once a tattoo was completed, it was rubbed with various herbs and oils to promote healing and seal the coloring agents. In ancient Egypt, bread and beer were used as currency between businesses and were also offered to gods and ancestors. It's believed that workers who built the pyramids were paid in beer and bread. The Egyptians considered beer and bread so important that they believed natural disasters occurred when the gods were unhappy and not providing enough for the masses. Ancient Egyptians believed that the deceased still required basic necessities in the afterlife, so they built toilets into tombs as a sign of reverence. The hair of a pharaoh was considered sacred and never to be seen. They always wore a crown or headdress called nemesis, which distinguished them from common people who were not allowed to wear headwear. King Tut wore sandals with his enemies' faces painted on the soles, likely as a representation of his kingdom's enemies. At least 80 pairs of shoes were found in his tomb, with an African prisoner on the inner sole of one shoe and an Asiatic prisoner on the other. Ancient Egyptians created hieroglyphics using only consonants, which meant that there were no vowels. It's unclear how they pronounced their words, but some accounts suggest that an equivalent to the letter E was sometimes included. Hieroglyphics are one of the oldest writing systems in the history of humankind. Scarab beetles were considered sacred by ancient Egyptians and were associated with the sun, birth, life, death, and resurrection. They were seen as a symbol of the regenerative powers of the sun and were associated with several gods, including Kepri, Atom, and Re. Scarabs were commonly depicted in art and jewelry. Number 18. The creation of fly swatters from giraffe tails was a common practice among ancient Egyptians. Giraffes, along with other animals, used their tails to ward off insects, making the tails a practical choice for swatting flies. Additionally, these swatters were considered fashionable. Number 19. Ancient Egyptians had a fondness for cats and baboons, but they also kept a variety of other animals as pets, including hawks, ibis, lions, gazelles, and domesticated dogs. While dogs were primarily used for hunting and guarding, they were still considered domesticated animals. The breeds of dogs kept in ancient Egypt included greyhounds, saleucas, mastiffs, and dachshunds. Number 20. In the early days of ancient Egypt, the servants of a pharaoh were buried with him. However, as time passed, Miniature models of the servants made from Ashapti or Shapti were buried instead. These models were intended to do the work the pharaoh did not want to do in the afterlife. Each figurine was designed for a specific purpose, and the burial included the necessary tools. Spell number six from the Book of the Dead was written in each tomb to activate the magic figurines. Number 21. The annual flooding of the Nile River was believed to be caused by the tears of the goddess Isis, who wept for her slain husband, Osiris. The night of the Turdrop was celebrated by sailing the river in colorful boats, singing praises to the gods, and offering gifts to the river. 
Although this celebration is still recognized in modern times, it is more of a tribute to the past than an active belief. To begin with an interesting fact, the mummification process was not invented by the ancient Egyptians, but was actually attributed to the South Americans, specifically in Peru, who had been practicing it for over 2,000 years before the first mummy was made in Egypt. The Egyptians mummified their dead to preserve the body and ensure that it would be able to journey to the afterlife. The process was intricate and required precision in each step, including wrapping the body in cloth that was over a mile long. However, not everyone in ancient Egypt was given the privilege of becoming a mummy and living on in the afterlife. It was reserved for the wealthier members of society. After being properly dried and wrapped, the body would be placed inside a stone sarcophagus, often carved or painted. Various objects, such as jars, figurines, and mummified animals, were also placed inside the sarcophagus, and then the entire structure would be buried in a tomb. There you have it, seven strange and fascinating things that the ancient Egyptians did. They were resourceful, intelligent, and creative in their approach to medicine, hygiene, and law enforcement. They also had a deep reverence for animals, including cats and crocodiles, and preserved them for sacred offerings. Their legacy continues to intrigue and captivate us today, and we hope you enjoyed learning about these intriguing practices. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.